Welcome back to the gun show my friends today. We are talking Jergens and IMTS You know you want to hear about it. We got some great automation We got some great new technology and you get to learn firsthand through MTD CNC We got Omar with us today, but joining Omar are two of my best friends in the world Eddie Saunders and author field Woo! They're gonna help me do podcasting the great thing about this show is every single one of us has our own podcast for the most part yeah. Or at least has at one time so it makes my job super easy, but we're gonna talk Jergens IMTS so for those of you watching listening paying attention from wherever you're paying attention IMTS MTD will be on the Jurgens booth Thursday from 10 to 12 and the booth number is 432154 Omar easy question to start off with before these guys pick your brain on the details of these things which is what are we excited about for IMTS what are you gonna be showing the world if I'm coming to IMTS why am I visiting the Jurgens booth welcome back to the gun show my friends this is the VIP edition well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Um, <laughs> thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, real excited about the show. Um, we're going to have some automation. I mean, I think that's the theme of this year's IMTS is everybody's coming out with some new automation. Um, we're coming out with the MTS, which is a machine uh, spindle uh, uh, pick-and-place gripper. Um, nice. Which is you're going to be able to set up parts on one side of your table on your, on your uh, three-axis machine and be able to feed an automated... Um, either vice, uh, hydraulic, or uh, pneumatic vice, and feed parts all day long. So you can take hours of setup time out, and that's what Jurgens does, right? We Just to clarify with these grippers before we continue, are we moving out vices or are we moving out parts? This is moving parts. Oh, so nice. It's, okay, it's cool. A spindle, it's a spindle gripper. Yeah, so nice. So basically it goes into your machine carousel, right? Yeah. And it comes out and picks a part up or grabs a part from the vice, drops it into a carrier, grabs the next part, drops it into the vise, spins back up into the carrier, and then you're off and yes. running. So the machine doors never open, and you just continue to run for hours. Oh. And in the automation world, the machine doors can oftentimes be the slowest part. <laughs> exactly. I mean, how many hours can you save a day just that door opening and closing, setting up, smacking it with a hammer, locking your vice down, indicating it in, shutting the door, hitting the start button. I got some friends out there that refuse to run coolant on their, some of their parts because they don't want the door to open and shut in their automation cobot world that moves so slow. So yep. they just leave the doors open the whole time, turn the coolant off, and let the automation just run itself. Yep. Now, my question, and we'll get more into the technology. I know you have a lot more to share, but does that also coincide with some of your pneumatic work holding as well, which allows the whole process to be in? Integrated through Jurgens, yes. yes, we're coming out with a new air vice. Nice, um, which is basically following the same technology that we use for our self-centering vice, our 5 CV vice. Um, it's going to use pneumatic shop air. Um, so, and then on top of that, you're be able to put an intensifier on it to get a higher clamp load. We're still working on those numbers. It's still, you know, a process. We got a few vices out there in the world right now being tested, and we're testing them in house as well. And we'll have those numbers all ready to go for IMTS. We're well, really excited. I've been into Cleveland. I've been into your facility. I've seen how you guys are doing the testing. So precise. Mm -hmm. So cool to see how everything's integrated. That massive Matt Sir that you have there as well doing yes. a lot of the R&D. Yes. But your entire factory is really set up to make sure that your products are the best when they leave that facility to make right. sure your customers are taken care of. I mean, and you guys have been doing it for such a long time. I mean, Jack and Matt are great friends of mine. Something I love about Jurgens in general is how community oriented you guys are. Yes. You know, one of my favorite interviews I've ever done with you guys uh, was with a young man and uh, I'm not gonna disrespect him in any way because I think his abilities are super abilities and not disabilities, mm -hmm. but he is, you guys hire unique individuals to come run right. places in your facility, and I'm inspired by what you're doing there, just away from the technology side. I had to th empathy is your thing, I know, but I had to throw that out there to give you a little, a little tidbit to feed on a little bit later with Omar. Um, all right, so we've talked about the grippers. We've talked about the automation. What else? Are we, we have new products coming out, right? Yeah, the AirVice is one of them. Um, and then we also have the MTR, which is actually a robotic end effector that we're coming out with. with you'll be able to purchase it with and without the wingman so that you can swap the end effector out. And what that's going to entail is to be able to swap our vices out in and out of the machine using a ZPS, our zero point system in the machine itself, either in a five axis, three, you know, three axis or four axis machine. So, uh, and then we'll have a beehive that that's what we lovingly call the holder for our vices 
So you'll be able to stack that up. It's completely customizable. And that, again, we'll have numbers on that and everything for IMTS as well. I mean, it, it's a great system we're putting together. Um, we're, we're all really excited about it. At EBITDA Growth Systems, we guarantee to double your value in three years. Well, instead of telling you about a guarantee, how about if I tell you a story? We had a shop owner come to us at an event saying, I'm not sure if you can help us. He said, we have our credit lines maxed out in our business. I have a second mortgage on my home. It's maxed out. I'm not sure what to do. I have a payroll coming up next week, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. Can you help us? We said we weren't sure, so we came in, and we came alongside of him. In 18 months, he went from not having any money to having over $800,000 in the bank and having a six times exit what his value was at that day. And now he's living a life that he always dreamed of with his family. And it's fantastic. And that's what's really rewarding for us. And that's what EBITDA Growth Systems is all about. If you want to know more about EBITDA Growth Systems, go to www.ebitagrowthsystems.com, E-B-I-T-D-A growthsystems.com, and go to our contact page where I will reach out to you personally. Before I allow these guys to jump in as I'm hogging the entire thing, I have to get through the three main questions that Matt wants me to ask you, right? We, we have to get through those. We've yeah. already done two of them, so third one, and then you guys can jump in. I'm sorry for hogging this whole thing. The last one is, how is Jurgens addressing the problem of low personnel in the workspace? That's, I think that's important for all of us to understand. Yes, yes. and Jurgens has been a pioneer in that for decades. Uh, we've been working with quick change systems for many, many years. And that's the main thing we want to do is we try to take the systems to make it quick change like right into the machine with low, you know, uh, technical ability. So basically you're just swapping out fixture plates using our ball lock system or our quick lock system or QL2 system or Q even our QLS system and ZPS. It's all very quick, all repeats within tenths. Uh, our ZPS system repeats within plus or minus two tenths. Our ball lock repeats within plus or minus five tenths and our QL2 system repeats within plus or minus three tenths. So it just makes it to where you drop the plate on, you either lock down our shanks for ball lock or stud for our QL2 system or flip a switch for our hydraulic or pneumatic ZPS system and the mm. machine's ready to go. So once you set up the subplates in the machine, you know, that's, that's the most longest process, which takes a couple hours. And after that, your changeovers go from 30, 40, couple hours, two hours, three hours, four hours to literally minutes. Yeah. So, Amazing. I mean, and, and you just, you can't beat that in the real world. I mean, your spindle time is where you're making money. So if you're cutting out hours a day of your setup time, you're making more money every hour. So Yeah, extremely important to understand, but I'm not hogging this conversation anymore. <laughs> Author and Eddie, it is open to you guys as well. So the first thing, when you're talking about the, the spindle-mounted parts changer that's going to move the parts around inside the machine, keeping the door closed, saving all of that, is there more that you can share about, like, how does that work? Because my brain is a machinist, right? goes right to, okay, what spindles can I put this into? Like, I want to know, I don't want to bore everyone here with the technical details, but that's... Oh, please do. I want to be... <laughs> <laughs> I love when you ask questions, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Just keep asking, please. But it, it's like, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, how do I use this? I mean, I know at IMTS, we're going to showcase it. We're going to be in the booth. We're going to make sure right. we capture it for anyone that can't make it to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Like, how does that work? Because that just blows my mind. To keep the doors closed, I could just run a ton of parts. Yes. Like, so basically, the, the spindle gripper yeah. um, basically loads in just with your normal tooling and your carousel. Correct? Okay. Okay, so in some machines, you got to be careful. You know, you have to load the adjacent tools. You have to make sure they stay open yeah. depending on the carousel size. Considered yeah. like a large and heavy tool? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. a big round one. So um, basically, it's activated either pneumatically or hydraulically. So okay. through the spindle. So yeah. it's either shop air or it's using your coolant to, okay. to lock and unlock the, the gripper. So it comes in, you just use your normal programming, just like a step and repeat process. You just come in, grab the part, move it over to its load station, grab the next part, come in, and it's just programmed X mm. and Y and Z yeah. for loading. And then we have four different types total. You have two pneumatic, two hydraulic, one's compensating, one's non-compensating. So okay. there's a compensating feature to it. So if you're coming down and you have a really rigid work holding component, yeah. it can come in and slide into position and then still compensate release. And oh. then okay. you have some where if it doesn't matter, there's no, nothing to index the part, it's just a round part or a square part, whatever, or a rectangular part doesn't have a real you know, X or Y inhibitor. Yeah. You just drop it in, let go and, and run. So there's two different, there's four different total, two yeah. hydraulic, two pneumatic. So Can I play off of that question a little bit, Arthur? Is it okay? Or you, you have follow-ups? 
Go for it. Go for it. You go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. So you've got the versatility, right? Like you've right. got the versatility for the the, the compensating and the non-compensating. But I also love that that it sounds like any machine can really take advantage of this because yes. you have the option for the spindle air. You have the spin option to run it through the coolant. So it's like whatever machine tool you're thinking about, like in your brains as you're watching and you're li hearing about this, there's going to be a way to adapt this tool to their mills, yes. you know, whether you're marking a large tool or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, I just want to make sure I was getting that right because now my brain can start planning future production stuff, right? It sounds like right. we can start a machine shop now <laughs> yeah. is what we're figuring out. You're asking the right questions. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play off of it yeah. a little bit and just ask, uh, because there's so many variations of parts that are out there, uh, what's the expansion and retraction rate of the grippers themselves or do I need, or do what I need to buy multiple different ones? I know you mentioned one that has more of that adaptability, but what right. does that look like? Hi everybody, Amy Teal, CEO and co-founder of Shop Floor Coffee, proudly a women-owned business that's supporting the manufacturing community. Mike Franz, CIO, co-founder of Shop Floor Coffee. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in to check us out. Amy, tell us a little bit about Shop Floor Coffee. So we're here to give back to the manufacturing community through purchases of coffee. So every purchase you make, we donate a portion of those proceeds back to help workforce development initiatives. We can't tell you how much it means to us to help support the great manufacturing community. We've been involved with it for like 20 years and uh, we know there's issues around finding good people, finding people that really want to be involved in the industry. And we want to start by giving back to that, giving back to the programs, getting kids involved with these awesome programs. There's robotics, there's computer, software. There's so many cool things involved with the industry that people just aren't aware of. We want to help raise that awareness by giving back in a little way that we can. And really we came up with the idea of shop floor coffee because there are two complaints on a, sh on a shop floor. It's the coffee and the toilet paper. We can't do anything about the toilet paper, but we can help you get better tasting coffee on your shop floor while helping the community. So shopfloorcoffee.com come visit us and, and support the community. Well, basically on the gripper itself, you have two different positions for, I, I can't remember the travel is off the top of my head, I apologize, but there's two positions where you can set the grippers, okay? So I think they're a few, uh, I wanna say like uh, 20 millimeters apart mm -hmm. and, and loading. So that gives you that movement. And then you also have machinable grippers. So if you needed to make it a larger part and you still only need that little bit of travel, you can make the grippers a little bit larger, drop in, grab it as long as it can still fit within your machine carousel. That's that's the trick. You know? Sure. So you can only get so big. So if you have a larger part, you make sure you 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 pick the specific grippers that would work for you. So we have serrated, we have pin grippers, we have machinable grippers, and then we also have um, trapezoidal grippers where it comes in and it can grab a round part and load it into an ER collet or something of that nature. Trapezoidal grippers, I like that mm -hmm. word. All right, Eddie, we've stolen all the time. What you got, buddy? No, I'm just embracing all this wonderful information, and I've got a pretty direct question, man. In all reality, you're bringing a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, and you've used, even used the word excitement multiple times in this conversation. Mm -hmm. what, what's the real showstopper that's going to be in that booth? What's What are even one or two things that you have to come check this out? you got to come hold it down with us. It's Sorry, Omar. To. O Omar. To. It's Omar. You can show up to see Omar. He's the yeah, showstopper. I'll, I'll be there all day, all, every single day. So. <laughs> no. Uh, Enough said. <laughs> on a serious note, um, the, the real showstopper we're actually planning on having there at the show is the MTR. So the Unpack MTR, that for me, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the MTR is the one major thing we're really excited about. That that gripper, or sorry, not gripper, that is our um, our end effector, robotic end effector, um, is really, I believe, going to change a lot for us. Um, we're working on you know the entire system from how it connects to the robot. We're testing it at different facilities. Uh, for different sizes, um, to grab our all four different sizes of our vice, our, our standard vice, um, our uh, 5CB vice, uh, manual version. Um, that guy's gonna be, you're gonna have a little cleat. All of our vices are already automation ready to where it just uh, accepts the cleat on the side and then the ZPS studs underneath. And basically we'll have the beehive set up right next to the machine. You can just roll that hive in and out so as you're loading the vices on a, on a bench somewhere else outside of the cell, you pull out the finished beehive, roll in the second beehive, mm. and then unload parts and reload parts, and then the machine never stops. It's just constantly running. It's just like any other machine tending uh, setup with a robot. 
I we're going to be able to watch this happening live? Uh, that part, you're going to see an actual robot loading and unloading from a beehive, a table version of the beehive, and then loading onto a ZPS unit on a table. So hmm. uh, we're not going to actually show it in a machine because we don't have a machine at our booth, but we're going to simulate it the best we can. Same thing with the MTS. Um, we're not going to actually have that moving, but we're going to have one there, you know, loaded and showing how it would work in a machine area, but static. So we're really excited to show it all. That's so it's MTR, right? Is the end of arm? Is that yes. the, okay. So, so it's really exciting to, to, to be able to check that out with you guys because historically there hasn't been a ton of end of arm competition, but if you guys are entering the market, there's going to be more competition. There's going to be more options for the manufacturers that are out there. Right. And all of that competition is going to create better products to, to bring more of this automation that we're all so focused on. So I'm really excited to check that out. Yeah, me too. We're, we're really excited to enter the market and get out there in the world and start competing with these other vendors. So. Yeah. All right, my friends, we're starting to wrap up. Any final questions or should I close this thing out? Any final statements? Totally up to you guys. I can wrap this up. Let me know. Take her home, homie. Take her home? Yeah. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Everyone who's been here, Omar, you're a man. You're the man. You're a superstar <laughs> man. How do I put that? Did I do it right? I'm not sure if I did. Actually, Eddie is really good at this kind of stuff. You want to do your WWE closing? Can you do that for me? You're really <laughs> oh, good at it. Yeah, you weren't go, prepared. Eddie. Can you do it for us? <laughs> let's go. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, representing Jurgens by way of Cleveland, Ohio, is Omar. <laughs> And that's how thank we close you, it out you, for you. everyone that wants to come join uh, join Jurgens every day, of course. But if you want to see MTDCNC, it'll be Thursday from 10 to 12, booth number 432154. Eddie, that was freaking awesome, Omar. <laughs> nice job, thank dude. you so much for your nice time. Job, Arthur, okay. always a pleasure. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you for watching, listening, paying attention. We appreciate everything that you guys are doing for the manufacturing world.